powerful God, the same God who allowed us to wake up this morning to see another day. He loves us, he cares for us, he has blessed us and continues to bless us each and every day of our lives. So we can say with joy and gratitude in our hearts, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for another day, another opportunity to glorify you, to magnify you for who you are. You were kind enough, loving and merciful enough to wake us so that we can see a brand new day. We just want to give your name honor, glory, and praise for who you are. Now, God, let us worship you today in spirit and in truth. Have your own way, God. Move in the midst of these, your people. And as we worship you, let us rejoice in who you are. You are honorable. You are holy. You are mighty. There is no one like you. So we give you the highest praise. We give you hallelujah. Have your own way in Jesus' name. We will now have our Veterans Day tribute. Good morning, Friendship. Good morning. Today is Veterans Day here at Friendship. Veterans are very important to our church history. Back in 1916, eight honorable veterans who resided at the VA paid $400 to purchase a building so they could have a place to worship. The building is half still standing on Garden Drive now, and veterans have always been a part of our congregation. <laughs> and we thank them, and we thank all the veterans here today. We say thank you for your service. Whenever, wherever you served, it all helped to make our nation great. You went, you served, you suffered. We honor you today for that. And now we'll uh, let the congregation, oh no, just a minute, I need to back up and <laughs> the candle is lit and the wreath is laid. We will now have presentation of colors.
<laughs> Thank you very much. Now, let's back up. Um, now we'll take the time for you, the congregation, to call out your family veteran's name. If they're now serving, if they did serve and no longer is with us, we're honoring all veterans, and we can start by calling the names. I'll start. Claude Goins, my father. My brother, Robert Goins. My brother, Bill Goins. We salute them all. We will have a moment of silence for the DC. Yes. And now as I call the list, I hope all veterans signed the list out front as they came in. <coughs> if you will stand, the children have some cards. Okay. Um, we first recognize our oldest veteran here today, Buford Autumn. Will you come down? this part now, and then I'll get back to the others. Um, thank you for your service to our country. Come on over here, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Mr. Troy McConnell is our second oldest, and Mr. Dan Parks, will you come over here too? <laughs> I have applications. I'm going to present them to you all. We're going to apply. And if the church prays, yes. maybe they can be on their way to Washington, D.C. with the honor of life. Yes. Won't that be great? Yes. Thank you. Look at this to Mr. Charles. And now for the veterans today. If you will stand, you give them to the people who stand up besides me, not me. <laughs> I'll try to pick the ladies out. I should have had them over on the side first. Laura Morin. <laughs> Mari Thomas. Are there any other lady veterans in the house? June Delaney, I don't see, didn't sign the paper. Okay, June Norwood. Can I get your name? Yes, I've got that name. Thank you, Shirley. If you remain standing while the children give you a card, I'll start calling them in name. Hugh Hall was here and left. Daniel Parks has been, uh, um, Bonnie James, Booney, <laughs> what is it, I can't read, Benny. Benny, I'm sorry Benny, you know I'm sorry, Monty Drake, Thurman Walters, Sydney Adams, Reggie Knox, Claude J. Goins, Gabe Neal, Danny Williams, Garfield Hill, Emmanuel Lewis, Norman Davis Jr., Chucky Harrison, Billy Bates, Robert Morris, Michael Young, almost <laughs> Melvin Jackson, John Bryce, Michael Hutton, 
and Charles Dixon, we salute you today. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And now, as Norman Davis comes, we will hear his veteran story. I will let you know that there is dinner prepared for the veterans downstairs, but with the trip to Marshtown, you'll have to pick it up and take it home. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Now we'll have Norman Davis. <laughs> Honor to the Almighty, the source of our strength, and our rock, and our salvation. Uh, homage to uh, Reverend Charlton, uh, Pastor Latney, and esteemed clergy, and to all the uh, outstanding members of Friendship Baptist Church. God bless you all. Uh, to all the veterans, I salute you. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Know that you are, we are, a representative of the uh, small percentage of the population that volunteered and stepped up and gave the oath of service which ends with the words, so help me God. Yeah. Something to be proud of, gentlemen, we walk tall. Uh, and to Miss Georgia Gillespie, uh, if we will, um, we can't say enough about her selfless commitment to the acknowledgement and recognition of the military veterans. appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done in this regard. All right, uh, in the interest of time, every veteran has an experience or a story to tell. Uh, this is a snapshot of mine. Chanel, if you could cue it up and just let it run through the uh, uh, slide 25, okay? There's some videos at the end that will give you a better example of what it is that I'm talking about. Uh, after graduating from the Naval Academy and flight school, I had an opportunity to uh, fly the uh, service of pilot in the uh, P-3B Orion. It's a four engine turboprop aircraft that's used for anti-submarine warfare and open ocean surveillance. Uh, getting into the academy requires a, uh, uh, a nomination from a uh, congressman and a senator, and this is uh, one of the slides that shows. Uh, the picture of uh, taking the oath of office begins four years at the academy. Uh, a number of uh, people in my uh, background that was significant in helping me to get to that particular point. But moving on, after graduating, uh, I uh, went out to Pensacola, Florida, and started training in the uh, P-3B and the T-28 Trojan aircraft, which is a single-engine, two-seater aircraft that's used to uh, give you the basics of flight. Uh, we have, uh, following that, I uh, was on to, went on to uh, Naval Air Station, Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, flying in a uh, two-seater. Uh, this is the uh, T-28 uh, single-engine aircraft. It's a, it's a sizable aircraft, but it gives you the basics. Uh, this is the uh, S-2 uh, advanced training in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, it was after this, I received my wings and designation as a Navy pilot. Yeah. On to... Uh, hey. Afterwards, I uh, went on to, uh, you, uh, you can keep it rolling, Chanel. They uh, started flying at the uh, training uh, in the uh, P-3B uh, at uh, Naval Air Station Brunswick, Maine, at Naval Air Station Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, this is a picture of the aircraft. Uh, if you could pause it here, Chanel, uh, some basics on this one. Uh, fully loaded, 127,500 pounds, max fuel capacity. 600, uh, 60,000 pounds, 
uh, rate of fuel consumption that's about four to 5,000 pounds per hour. Endurance, hang time for this plane is about 10 to 13 hours. And uh, shaft horsepower, each engine is rated at four to 600 shaft horsepower. So it's, it's pretty significant. Let it roll, Chanel. Um, <laughs> Afterwards, I reported to uh, VP-10 Brunswick, Maine, doing a, a pre-flight walk around at this particular point uh, at the start of a, uh, a standard uh, ASW mission. A uh, mission could last anywhere from 7 to 11 hours. Uh, the seat on the picture on the right uh, was uh, some left seat time. This is a, uh, you can let it roll, you know. And this was uh, some right seat time. It's, uh, it's important that you get familiar with both sides of the aircraft. Uh, next slide shows the inside of a, a cockpit of the P3. It's kind of busy, but uh, with four engines, you expect to have some redundancy. Uh, next slide, Chanel. Uh, this is a, uh, a picture of a, a cockpit with the, uh, the, the crew members. Uh, a standard air crew consists of uh, 12 men, three pilots, uh, two flight engineers, uh, the tactical coordinator, who's the guy that coordinates action in the back, uh, three eight sensor operators, uh, an ordnance man, and a radio. Uh, and next slide, Chanel. Uh, picture on the left is home base for five uh, ASW squadrons. My squadron was BP-10. At any one time, three squadrons are stateside, two sides are two squadrons are deployed overseas uh, conducting uh, standard operations. Uh, let it roll, Chanel. Each uh, mission starts and ends with a briefing in this particular uh, facility. It's called an ASWOC Anti-Submarine Warfare Operations Center. Uh, mission critical and flight safety critical information is handed out. Uh, and let it roll, Chanel. These are the gents that I had an opportunity to fly with. Combat air crews. Uh, there's a total of 11. Uh, and you can just let this one roll, Chanel. <coughs> It's a total of 11. I unfortunately only have nine pictured. Uh, but I was, uh, uh, had the good fortune of being with uh, combat air crew number eight. And we, uh, should be the next one up. This is where we, uh, like I said, we had three pilots. Uh, it's just like uh, if you take a long road trip, if you're leaving here going to California, you rotate drivers, you do the same thing in the plane, okay? Uh, but Chanel, if you could go ahead and queue up the videos and let those run, you'll get a better picture of what it is that we're talking about. This is basically demonstrating a short field takeoff. Unexpected uh, occurrence, if you will. The, the next slide, that, uh, the next video that's coming up, is going to show a uh, uh, an inside of the aircraft uh, during a uh, takeoff. Okay. 
right. These, these gents are in the process of uh, going through the takeoff checklist. Uh, we're going to have a uh, visual presentation, if you will. Like I said, you've got uh, two pilots up front, flight engineer, and they're basically getting things ready. They're going down the takeoff checklist, proceeding down the taxiway uh, to proceed out into the runway. This one's going to give you an opportunity to see what it's like to actually be in the cockpit when the plane is landing. This is a uh, picture of uh, St. Rose United holding this church children's choir circa 1957. Uh, I am pictured in the back along with uh, some of my cousins. This is a little, little storefront church, uh, but we talk about humble beginnings and where things can end up. This is uh, uh, what I have to offer. God bless you. Church. It is praying time. Let us stand to our feet and hold hands with one another and let's pray and go to our awesome and holy God in prayer. When we pray and we pray trusting and we pray believing God has a way of making a way out of no way in the lives of his people. He's truly amazing, awesome, mighty and powerful. And when we who are God's people pray, God has a way of making a way out of no way. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We just want to say thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. If we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't raise them high enough to give you praise, honor, and glory for what you have done, for what you are doing, and what you are preparing to do in the lives of your people. Now, God, as we come together, hand to hand and heart to heart, we pray, God, that you would answer our prayers. You are a prayer answering God. You are a way making God. You are our joy, our hope, our help, everything that we need. We know you are. So dear God, have your holy way in the lives of these your people. We thank you for another day's journey. You woke us up and allowed us to see this beautiful day. Now God, as you touch our hearts, minds, and spirits. Allow us to always be about your business. We love you, God. We glorify you and we magnify your precious name. 
In the name of Christ Jesus, our divine Savior and Lord, we pray. And all who believe and agree, say amen. 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 And amen. As you remain standing to your feet, our congregational hymn is one, uh, number 14. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus our Lord. He is the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Please take me to the key. 
to stop playing these games. Yeah. Yeah. We need a word for the people's pain. So Lord, speak right now. Let it fall like rain. Oh yes, we're desperate. We're chasing after you.
Anybody glad that the blood still works? Anybody know that the blood still works? Anybody saved by his blood? And because the blood still works, and because the blood will never lose its power, we are able to gather together to glorify our holy, our awesome, and our mighty God. And when we know that the blood of Christ Jesus, which has saved us and sustains us day by day, it gives us the reality that we can give joy, we can give God praise because he never changes. And truly, the blood still works. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God some glory. He's worthy. From the rising of the sun, he's worthy. Even until the going down of the same, he is worthy of all of our praise. The Bible gives us to know in Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6, one of the favorite psalms of the church and those who are born again. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely. <laughs> Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon these lips of clay. Speak into our mind, our heart, and our spirit that we might be able to declare to thy people the oracles of faith. Guide us, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. We are weak, but thou art mighty. Guide us with thy powerful hand. We love you, God, and we pray now that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart might be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. For it is in the matchless, holy, and divine name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And all who believe and agree say amen. 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 amen and amen. amen. Psalms 22 through 24 are considered very powerful and precious pieces of Hebrew poetry. In Psalm 22, we have a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ as our good shepherd. That Psalm is a clear prophecy of the crucifixion and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He is pictured in Psalm 24 as a king coming in power and in glory. Anybody looking forward to him coming back? Right in the middle of these, as old folks say, right smack dab in the middle, we have Psalm 23. This Psalm is one of the most well-known and best loved of all the passages in the Word of God. Here Jesus again is considered the great shepherd. You see in Psalm 22, it pictures the death of Jesus for we who are sinners. His death is the event that made it possible for us to be born again. In Revelation 1 through 5 and 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19, we find the affirmation of that power. In Psalm 24, it pictures the end of the age when the king himself, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, will reign in perfect righteousness. On that day, those who have been washed in the blood. I did, didn't y'all hear the choir say the blood still works? <laughs> washed in his blood and saved by his grace will reign, rule, and have eternal residence with God. We find that affirmation in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and the 17th verse. However, between the time you get saved 
And the time you go home to heaven, you got to live. There's a life that you have to live while here. And this is the purpose of Psalm 23. In these six precious verses, God's little shepherd boy, his name is David, allows us to listen as he lifts his heart in song to honor the Lord that he loves so much. Anybody love Jesus? In these verses, David tells us to get your praise on. When you stop and think about his goodness, his kindness, and his tender mercy in your life. Allow me then to lift for your edification this morning. God is my everything. Is he your everything? Is he your joy and sorrow? Is he your hope for tomorrow? Is he a friend when you need a friend? He is my everything. And he is my everything. And because he is, I will exalt him. Yes. He is my everything because of my experiences with him. And he is my everything, and I must express it in my praise. Every now and then, you just got to get your praise on. Yes. Every now and then, we think about how good God has been to you. You got to get your praise on. First of all, let me tell you, I've got to exalt him. <coughs> the word exalt is a verb. And that verb means, first of all, to hold something or something or someone in very high regard. Think or speak very highly of them. Y'all know anybody y'all think highly of? Yes. <laughs> Raise someone to a higher rank or a position of great power. He is my everything. And church, I'm going to boast about him. Yeah. I'm going to boost him in my praise. And I'm going to brag about the fact that God is a good God. Yes, God is a mighty God. Yeah. God is an awesome God. Yeah. Look at David as he exalts the Lord. Who does he exalt, Brother Preacher? Well, I'm glad y'all curious about that. He exalts him by, first of all, his name. David identifies the object of his love as the Lord God Almighty. He is the great I am. This is the God of creation, the God of salvation, the God of eternity, the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the one and the only true God. David calls him the Lord. Some people call him God. Some people call him friend. Some people call him father. Some people know him as Jesus. I don't know what you call him, but you ought to call him. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Go ahead now. When should I call him, preacher? Call him early in the morning. Yeah. Call him in the noonday. Call him in the midnight hour. And I'm going to tell you this morning, our God will never say no. Oh, yeah. This great God has placed his name all, all over this particular psalm. Notice how he has written his name in bold letters across the very tapestry of this psalm. David, first of all, calls him Jehovah Rohi, the Lord who is my shepherd. Then he calls him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who is my provider. David calls him Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who gives me peace. Yes. David calls him Jehovah Rapha, uh -huh. the Lord who gives me healing. Yes. David calls him Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord who ah. imputes righteousness on me. Yes. David calls him Jehovah Shammah, yes. the God who is always there. He calls him Jehovah Nisi, yes. the Lord who is my banner. Yeah. David calls him Jehovah Makadesh, ah. the Lord who is my sanctifier. Ah. David calls him Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord who is most high. Y'all want to call him? David exalts him because of the nature of God, of all the many names, the Lord that David could have magnified. David calls him Jehovah Rohi, the Lord who is my shepherd. Why does David do that? Because the image of a shepherd tenderly leading, feeding, and caring for his sheep. It's a perfect picture of our precious Savior's relationship to we who are his sheep. Yeah. In fact, when you think about it, 
The image of himself as a shepherd was the favorite of the Lord himself in John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 and 2. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I am godly glad yes. that when I got born again, when I got saved and he instilled his Holy Spirit within me, I got more than just a savior. Yes. I also got him as my shepherd. Yes. I got one who loves me, yes. tends to me, yes cares about me, needs me, he feeds me, he protects me, he guides me for all the challenges that life might bring my way. When we got born again, we got the one who made us the top priority in life. I don't know about you, and I'm glad that we have all of us here together, but when God sees you and when God sees me, he sees us individually, yes. cares for our needs individually. If you know him like David did, then you know that he is worthy of our exaltation. Therefore, may we who are the children of the Lord, who are his sheep, never be ashamed to exalt him, praise him, and worship him, because he sought us, he bought us from the wild mountain of sin and despair, out of death's valley, and gave us a new home on Salvation Boulevard. Yes, sir. He is my everything and I will exalt him. Then, because he is my everything, I is because I have experiences with the Lord. Anybody ever spent any time with the Lord? Amen. Have you had to go to your secret closet? Have you had to go to your hiding place and just let the Lord God cover you, speak to you, encourage you, and let you know that everything is going to be all right? God bought us from a mighty long way, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Aren't you glad about it? Look at what David experiences. He experiences a personal relationship with God. When this psalm begins in verse 1, David is writing in the first person. It seems as though he's talking to us about the shepherd, and in doing so, he uses the possessive pronoun, my, to talk about his relationship with the shepherd. He did not say the Lord is a shepherd. He did not say the Lord is our shepherd. He did not say the Lord is your shepherd. But David says the Lord is my shepherd. David says this because he wants every one of us to know that we need a personal relationship with God. Now there are some folk you know of. There are some folk you know about. But you got to make sure you know Jesus for yourself. I'm glad he's my mama's shepherd. I'm glad he was my daddy's shepherd. Uh, that he took him beyond the blue ether one day and took him into the lofty sky and put him in his home forever. I'm glad about that. I'm glad that I've got some brothers who are his shepherd, but they've gone home to be with the Lord. But I'm telling you today that I'm glad that he is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I shall not want him. In fact, <laughs> when you look at the rest of the psalm, it is in the development of that psalm, David lets us realize that as uh, this little sheep, he tells us to think that the great shepherd provides for him and for you who are his people. David experiences a precious relationship with the Lord. When you look at the tenderness of the shepherd, David tells us his shepherd makes him to lie down in green pastures. The shepherd knows that unlike goats, which will eat anything, they'll eat weeds, they'll eat trash. The sheep, however, prefer the tender green grass. 
the shepherd leads them to a place where he knows they will be able to feed. Uh -huh. He makes them lie down where he knows that they're able to get the best of food. Uh -huh. Aren't you glad that God will provide the best for you and for me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He also knows the sheep will not lie down unless they feel perfectly safe from enemy attack. Yeah. He knows they need to lie down because their wool grows in thickness and richness in direct proportion to the time they spend resting and reflecting on the green grass that they ingest. Right. And with all of this in mind, the shepherd tenderly leads his sheep to the places of great safety and great nutrition. Yes, That's a picture yes, of the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Because and as his children, he knows we must feed. He provides the best food for you and for me. He knows we must rest and allow that we have ingested from him the proper diet so that we might be able to rest well. Y'all know how it is when you eat? <laughs> You just want to put your feet up. <laughs> and as God's children, when we rest in him and we have been fed by the table of our Lord God Almighty, it gives us the opportunity to rest in him, relax in him, and have peace in him. What an awesome shepherd we have. What a tender shepherd we have. He fights off the world so that we have time to rest in him. Yes, he tenderly meets our needs. Yes, I want to ask you this morning, are you taking advantage of what the Lord God has provided for you and for me? Yes, sir. Yes, Look, sir. if you will, that we have a thoughtful shepherd. Yeah. The yeah. shepherd leads his sheep beside still waters because he knows the sheep will not drink from a running stream. Uh -huh. You see, a sheep, they, ha they have a morbid fear of the water. Why? They are not designed for swimming. Uh -huh. With their heavy coats of wool and their little spindly legs, sheep are extremely top-heavy. Uh -huh. In the water, their wool fills with water, and they easily flip over and drown. The sheep know this, and they will shy away from running water. The shepherd also knows this uh -huh. and searches out placid pools for them to drink from. Yeah. If necessary, he will dam up a place in a stream to make them have a calm water to be able to drink from. Has God ever done that for you? Yeah. <laughs> Have he ever led you to a place right in the midst of your difficulties? Yeah. Has he ever led you to a place right in the midst of your troubles? Yeah. Has he ever led you to a place right in the midst of your trials? Yeah. When the doctor said, I've done all I know how to do. When you got more month than you got money. God will give you a place so that you might be able to have peace in the midst of your challenges. The great shepherd knows that his sheep need cool water of his grace to make it through this world. He knows that we have need of places of stillness where we can rest and reflect upon him, his goodness, kindness, and mercy. Yes, God cares about you and he cares about me yes, and the challenges that we face from day to day. How do you know that, brother preacher? You ought to press your way to Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 15th verse. Round your way to 1 Peter the 5th chapter and the 7th verse. He will lead you down to Hebrews 4 and 16 and Matthew 11 and 28 and let you know I'll make a way out of no way for you. The shape experience a profound relationship with the Lord God Almighty. The good shepherd provides life and this is where the relationship between a human shepherd and his sheep and the heavenly shepherd and his sheep move in different directions. The good shepherd gives his sheep something no human shepherd could ever provide for 
his flock. He gives them life. While the human shepherd provides everything needed by his sheep to maintain life, the fact remains that he receives his sheep after they have life. But aren't you godly glad that he brought you into this life existence and he takes care of you each and every day? How do you know that, preacher? Where did he find you and where did he find me? We were dead in trespasses and sin, according to Ephesians 2 and 1. You see, the phrase, restoreth my soul, literally means he brought me back. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he found me on Mr. up Avenue and saved my soul and put me on saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost Boulevard. Jesus. Yeah, he brings us who are wayward in sin back from the grips of death and gives us life and he gives us life more abundantly. Just remember now, if you know Jesus, you have eternal life right now. You don't have to wait until the battle is over. You don't have to wait until you're laid out here in front. You can have joy right now. You can have peace right now. You can have power right now. You can have everything you need right now. God is our everything. And when we think about it, the good shepherd provides leadership. The good shepherd always leads his sheep in the right way. Whether his path leads through the glen in verse 2 or to the gorge as in verse 4. He always leads us in the best paths of life. Now parenthetically, P.S. You might not like what you go through in this life. You might not like the challenges that you go through in this life. You might not like the hurt and the pain that you go through in this life. But I'm here to tell you, when God does what God does, he works out the good, he works out the bad, he works out the high, he works out the low. But when he leads us, he guides us in a way that we always give him glory, honor, and praise. That's right, that's right. When you look at the word paths, it comes from a word that means to circuit or to orbit. The Lord's leadership always leads us in a path that causes us to orbit around him. And just as the bodies in heaven are subject to the gravitational pull or pull of the sun, those who are in orbit with the Lord God Almighty ought to always find yourself circling around him. Every now and then that song, Jesus is the center of my joy, ought to rise up in your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Because if I walk around him, if I am orbiting around him, everything, everything. is going to be all right. He is my everything and I will exalt him. He is my everything because of my experiences with him. But I want to let you know this morning, he is my everything, and I will express it in my praise. Come on, David, get your dance on, if you will. Look at what the shepherd expresses. In verses 3, in verse 3, David talks to us about God in those first three verses. Now, beginning in verse 4, David begins to talk to God about God. When he considers what he had in God and the God that he is talking about, David cannot refrain from getting his praise on. Every now and then, when you look back over your life and you look how good God has been to you, you can't help but wave your hand. <laughs> you can't help but get joy in your heart. You can't help but tell the Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. You can't help but tell the Lord, I thank you 
for being my joy. I thank you for being my help. I thank you for being my hope. I thank you for being my strength. I thank you for being a friend that will never leave me by myself. David praises God because God has power. Ah, in his power, God will give you peace, which passes all understanding. Even though the sheep must at times pass through the most frightening and dangerous of places, they travel in peace, knowing that their shepherd has everything under his control. That same confidence ought to be your confidence, and that same confidence ought to be my confidence. Because if you know Jesus, the great shepherd is leading you. If we know that he is in absolute control of the paths of life, then we can pass through the shadows in peace and security. How do you know that? You ought to drop your finger around Psalms of 37 and 23 every now and then. I want to let you know this morning, by the way, a shadow can't do you no harm. What can a shadow do to you? What can the shadow of an angry dog do to you? It can't bark. It can't bite. And what can the shadow of a poisonous snake do to you? It can't strike you. The shadow cannot harm. And if you walk with Christ Jesus, you are walking in the light. And the thing about shadows, when the light shows up, they have a way of disappearing. When you travel... With the light who is Jesus the Christ, the shadows will get away from you. They will not bother you. They can't do you any harm. In his power, he provides his presence. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that when I woke up this morning, he was on my mind. When I woke up this morning, he was on my heart. When I got up out of my bed, he was in my spirit. And because I've got him inside of me, because I've got his presence with me, I know he's above me. I know he's beneath me. He's to the right of me. He's to the left of me. He's all over me. And he's keeping me alive. Aren't you glad about it? Yes, sir. And in his power, he provides protection. Yes, he does. David mentions the implements are the instruments of the shepherd's protection, the rod and the staff. Yes. Each of these tools had a very specific purpose in the life of the sheep. The staff was a long pole with a crook near the end. With this implement, the shepherd could correct the sheep, draw them closer when they began to wander, and lift them out of the crevices into which they might fall. The rod was much shorter than the staff and was used by the shepherd to protect the sheep from anything that might try to attack the flock. Yes. So too are the born again children of the living God. We are protected both by day and both by night, by the rod and by that statue. Yeah, he will take care of us. His rod, his staff will protect us from all dangers, seen and unseen. Yes, and Colossians 3 and 3 gives us the reality that we have perfect protection because of Christ Jesus, yes. our enemy may walk about as a roaring lion looking for victims to devour, devour according to 1 Peter 5 and 8. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the God we serve has him chained and he holds the leash. Yeah. When you got God on your side, you ought to give God praise because he will provide for you. What does it provide, Brother Pitchum? He'll provide you rest. He will provide you remedy. Uh -huh. Usually a soldier in enemy territory would be forced to gulp down a hasty meal as best he could while he cowered in fear of being discovered, captured, or killed. However, the Lord's sheep have that protection because God will feed you when folk wish you starved to death. Yeah. God has a way 
are providing you a meal right in the midst of your enemy. Yeah. That's a bold God. That's a brazen God. That's a powerful God. That's a way making God. I don't know about you, but when you think about it, God has always made a way out of no way from the time you have been born again and accepted him as the Savior and Lord of your life. He also provides remedies. When guests visited in a home, they were often anointed with oil to show them how much they meant to the host. It was considered an insult, you see, not to wash the feet and anoint the head of those who were guests in your house. His goodness and his blessings are reminders of the precious reality that God anoints us with oil. Yeah. And the anointing is a powerful reminder of the image of a wounded sheep being tenderly mended by a caring shepherd. Yeah. By the way, I would have you also reminded that he provides rejoicing. Yeah. David tells us that the Lord's blessing in his life are so great that he has more than he can handle. Yeah. Has God filled your cup? to overflow it. Well, this is exactly how the Lord treats we who are his children. If you are in a place where the Lord can bless you, then look out because God is getting ready to make a way out of no way in your life. <laughs> Another image of rejoicing lies in the picture of a cup that has been made to overflow. In those days when a guest was sitting with his host in the evening drink, uh, they weren't drinking something that some folk drink, the host would often uh, rise and refill the glass. If the host came and only filled the glass half full, it was the host's way of saying the evening is over. It is time for you to leave. He was saying that you don't have to go home but you got to get out of here. <laughs> Y'all remember. I saw you smiling. Y'all know what they were saying, amen. If, however, the host came by and filled your cup full, he was saying, I'm enjoying your company, and I would like for you to stay with me a while longer. Well, when the Lord God Almighty filled David's cup, he caused it to overflow. The Lord was saying, David, he was calling your name. He was calling my name. He was calling our name. And he said, surely I do enjoy your company, and I hope you will continue to abide with me. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt that the Lord filled my cup and my cup was running over. He said, I love you. I want you to hang around me. I want you to spend some time with me. And then David gives God praise because God is a promise keeper. He promises help for each and every day. And not only that, he promised us help for tomorrow. Yeah. And if the thought of his grace here and his glory to come doesn't light your fire, then I believe you're just a big old wet piece of wood. But if the Lord God, and you think about his goodness, when you think about his kindness, when you think about his tender mercy, when you think about the fact that he's brought you through dangers seen and unseen, when you think about the fact that he made the doctor out of a liar, when you think about the fact that he's a friend that is above any other friend, when you think about his goodness, his kindness, and his mercy, you ought to lift your hand in praise and say, thank you. You've been mighty good to me. Thank you. You made a way out of no way for me. Thank you. You helped me when I needed help. Thank you. You gave me strength when I needed strength. Thank you. You gave me joy when I needed joy. Thank you. You gave me peace when I needed peace. Thank you. What a friend. 
we have in Jesus all our sins and our griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I don't know about you. Sometimes when I think about his goodness, all I can do is wave my hand. Sometimes when I think about his goodness, all I can do is shout and give God a praise. Sometimes when I think about his goodness, I get a dance on because I think about how good God has been to me. When I think about his goodness, when I think about his kindness, when I think about his tender mercy, all I want to do is say thank you. You've been mighty good to me. Thank you. You made a way for me. Thank you. You picked me up. You turned me around. You placed my feet on solid ground. Thank you from a joy. Thank you from a sorrow. Thank you from a up. Thank you from a down. Thank you. You're a mighty good God. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough because when I look down through the years, I can say the Lord has been good to me. He picked me up, brought my feet out of the miry clay, placed my feet on a solid rock to say, anybody got a praise? Anybody got a praise? Anybody got a praise? Get up and tell him thank you. Get up and glorify him. Get up and magnify him. Get up and tell the Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Because you have done great things day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. You healed me when the doctor said I wasn't going to get well. You took care of me when I didn't have food on my table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody got anything to thank God for? Hadn't God been good to you? Hadn't God made a way for you? Hadn't God given you joy? Hadn't God given you peace? Hadn't God given you strength? Hadn't God given you power? Ain't God a good God? Ain't God a mighty God? Ain't God an awesome God? Somebody will say, I love to praise him. He's my rock in a weary land. I love to praise him. He's my joy. He's my help. He's my hope. He is my strength. I love him. Anybody love the Lord? Anybody love the Lord? Ain't good. Ain't he a good God? Ain't he a mighty God? Isn't he a holy God? Isn't he an awesome God? Isn't he a powerful God? Tell God thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. If he's done anything for you, if he's your shepherd, yes. keep on trusting him. Keep on depending on him. Keep on leaning on him. Day by day, watch God do what only God can do. If you need him, whatever your need is, he's a God who provides. He's Jehovah Jireh. If you're sick in your body, he's Jehovah Jireh. He'll make the doctor sit back and wonder, how did that happen? He is Jehovah Nisi. He'll lead you in paths of righteousness. He will lead you day by day. If there is some trouble in your mind, call on him as Jehovah Shalom. He'll give you peace that passes all understanding. And when you feel like nobody cares, 
when you feel like you're all by yourself, ask the Lord. call him Jehovah Shaman. For something you'll always be by your side.
Texas.